This is the weekly sales meeting for February 26, 2023. My name is Chris Fleming. You can reach me at chris at cdmediaconsulting.com or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com. Today's topic is depth of assortment. There are two ways to grow your sales franchise when you sell a renewable product. One is to get more new customers, and the second is to get your current customers to buy more from you. The first is harder than the second. When you are in advertising sales, we make them both difficult for different reasons. But if you were to look at your commission plan, one might see the degree of difficulty in the roadmap. Companies tend to pay more for brand new customers than for new business from existing customers. That may be a misstep, but we will address commission plans at another time. Most are not written from the standpoint of incentivizing behavior. It is all from the standpoint of controlling costs. They are a product of accounting rather than a function of the sales department. Again, more on this later. Your company may agree with me. It likely pays more for new business than new business from existing customers. I maintain that getting more from existing customers is easier than acquiring a new customer. It takes longer to get a new customer than it does to get an existing one to see value in something else you represent. Yet we shy away from asking the current ones to spend more. There is a fear factor in the ask. It is times two when it is a long-term agreement already in place and running smoothly. We are fearful of the upsell conversation. Meanwhile, the McDonald's drive through operator has no problem asking if you want to supersize your order. The Starbucks barista can add, do you want to add a pastry to your Vente Vanilla Diet Soy Cappuccino? There is something about the status quo that petrifies most in the sales profession. We would rather go mine the mud of the marketplace than ask an existing customer to buy one more item. Overcoming the status quo applies to both the customer and the seller. As sellers, we worry about asking long-term customers if they want to buy something else from us. What if they get mad and cancel? It is an inane, protective instinct that goes through the human brain. It is our defense mechanism. It is a base element fight or flight response, but it is unfounded. On the customer side, because we don't ask them to buy one more thing, they assign a number to our forehead, and that number is our value number. After we don't ask for a period of time, that number becomes a permanent tattoo on our foreheads for all eternity. And any time we contact that person or have a conversation with them about anything, that dollar amount appears. What comes next is a detente, a truce, where we both tiptoe around this idea of asking for more. So the act of upsetting the apple cart and disrupting the status quo exists on both sides of the equation. Existing customers are the best source of new business but are underutilized. We don't think like that. Part of that is training. Part of that is conditioning, and part of that is upsetting the status quo as described earlier. A question you should ask yourself is who can buy one more product from you? Do we have a growth strategy for every customer? I am willing to bet that answer is no. How hard would that be? It would need to start at the beginning of each customer relationship. It would be a verbal contract between you and your client, one where you pledge to show them every opportunity of value at your disposal and even some you do not control. It would take your business relationship to a whole new level. It would get you out of the status quo two-step many are stuck in. It would elevate you to the status of a consultant rather than a vendor. Establishing this pattern at the beginning of each relationship would break the cycle of non-committal communication. It exists with long-term customers. Something I like to do is study other business sectors to see what best practices they might use. I like to look at how these could translate to our business. One of those lessons comes from banking. Take Bank of America, which you might agree is a rather large institution. The chairman and CEO, Brian Moynihan, says the goal for every Bank of America client is depth of assortment of three to five products. Why three to five products? It creates loyalty and creates profit for the bank. When people buy more than one thing from you, they are less likely to leave you. Quite frankly, it's easier to go change your name down at the courthouse than it is to undo your banking relationships. This concept of depth of assortment plays into the long-term customer strategy. The checking account is the acquisition strategy. The retention and growth strategy are all the extra products they want to sell you. The real money is made on loans, retirement, brokerage, and insurance. The bank only offers free checking to get you in the door. The rest is the growth strategy. 
This is a concept about the customer. Well, the customer and the pathway to profit for your business, whether it be a bank, a furniture store, or selling advertising, having a long-range plan for each customer goes beyond making today's sale. It is about tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. According to W. Edwards Deming, profit in business comes from repeat customers, customers that boast about your project or service and that bring friends with them. Think about the pathway to profit for most businesses and how you can apply this to yours. The pathway to profit consists of acquisition, retention, and then growing the equity of the customer. Are you thinking this way in your sales franchise? We spend a lot of time at the top. We pour time, effort, and money into customer acquisition. It is like once we acquire the customer, we forget about them. It is one of the big complaints about sellers from customers. They are often reluctant to sign anything long-term because of this mentality. We are chasing the brand new customer, the shiny new toy. We forgo cultivating customer loyalty and increasing the average order on the existing client base. The second act is a lot easier and more profitable than the first. Repeat customers tend to make bigger purchases and more purchases over time. They should have a higher value and a higher priority in our weekly planning activities. Make this your priority. Build it into your schedule. Think about your current customer base. What client do you have on your roster that is capable of buying more than one product from you? More than two? More than three? Could we cultivate consumer loyalty and unbreakable bonds if we employed this depth of assortment strategy used by banks? Our relationships could be positioned as an intricate part of the company's success. That can happen when we have depth of assortment with our customers. How many customers do you have and how many products do they buy from you, typically? And what roadmap have we laid out for each of them to see and believe that anything else we have can be useful for their long-term growth? These are business consultant level conversations that we may not be having. Look for creative ways to introduce your new products. Are you aware of every way you can impact your business customer? And are they aware of you? When I was a day-to-day -day seller, I had a client product grid. I know, I also had an abacus, I get it. But I listed all the clients down one side and all the products across the top. And I made sure there was a checkbox in every grid alignment. I made sure every one of my customers knew about all the opportunities to use my products and what they could do for them. It didn't happen all at once, but over the course of many conversations. My goal was to uncover the uncovered. I wanted to be looked at as a true business consultant. I asked questions. I talked to the staff. I brought new insight to the table and with it a new way to use something I represented. When you identify areas where you can assist, let them know about it. Remember the pathways to profit. How are we doing in these areas? Acquiring the customer, retention, and growth. I had a friend named Steve when I worked in Nashville. He was the number one seller for Heilig Myers, the now defunct furniture chain. Their demise had nothing to do with Steve. He was the best salesperson in the entire chain for many years in a row. He had a simple strategy. It was depth of assortment. He knew when he sold living room furniture to somebody, they had other rooms in their house that would need furniture. And he knew he would have the opportunity to sell it to them every 9 to 18 months. He would reach out to his customers from time to time with more opportunities when he had them. That was his secret. Once he acquired a customer, he would always let them know when he had something of value. When we get a new client, we often think the journey is over. But if we look at each customer as an opportunity for the future, we would take a different approach. We would consider the depth of assortment strategy as a solid operating plan for each customer. We should start thinking that our existing customers are our best source of new business. My book, Yes, I'm a Salesman, You Can Be Too, is now available from Amazon.com. If you like what you have heard here today, please consider buying a copy or two. You can always send one to a friend. You can go to Amazon.com right now and order Yes, I'm a Salesman, You Can Be Too.